Okay, welcome back at Yakayima TV. Uh, today we have a very interesting and new, let's say, new patent on re regarding 3D printing. I'm talking with uh, Professor Frans Haas. He is a, a professor at the University of Technology Graz in Austria, and he has developed with his team a uh, 3D printing, metal printing technology based on LED instead of laser and, and electronic beams. So, um, very curious to find out what your project encompasses, how far you are, and what the idea behind your technology is. So, please go ahead. Hi, thanks uh, for this invitation and for the kind uh, introduction. And um, let's start with, with a short uh, introduction of the um, uh, technology and also of the prototype printer. And therefore, I want to um, share with you the uh, presentation and this will be uh, now possible. It is a presentation titled um, AM2025. So it's a forecast in, in the near, <laughs> near uh, future and uh, we have invented at our institute, I'm the head of this institute, we have uh, 30 researchers uh, at our department uh, and also at the moment I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering which is very a responsible task for me. Uh, three, uh, two um, inventions, the first is the so-called SAT3D, it's more for prototyping and for education for children uh, uh, and the second one is for uh, manufacturing SLED M, uh, selective LED uh, based melting of metal uh, powder. And uh, of course, we have an initial situation that we have uh, highly developed uh, uh, printing technologies at the moment. And of course, a lot of applications, a lot of uh, new products in the field of aerospace, in the field of medicine and implants and so on. And uh, also that uh, can introduce ourselves and, and my institute here. We are based on precision machining, especially grinding technology. Mm -hmm. um, here you see a, a unique uh, grinding machine. Uh, fluid technology, also in the fluid sector, it's very important for new wolf design for 3D printing. 3D printing and additive manufacturing is done at TU Graz uh, in a special lab with my colleague, uh, Professor Christian. Of Somage at Lab at TU Graz. It's the brand name and also a brand name Smart Factory at TU Graz, the pilot factory. Okay. And um, of course, we have in the field of 3D printing um, the, the huge advantage complexity is for free. So we have a lot of freedom. And uh, now we have to bring it on earth, this complexity for, for construction uh, with the process. And so I will uh, say it adaptability for free. Uh, this should be done by the machine itself, by the construction of the machine. And of course, at the end, we want not only a very complex part, we want to use it. Uh, with uh, smooth surfaces, with high accuracy, and so that's the task of the post-processing. So we have to say usability should be for free. And to fulfill these um, approaches, we have um, now overcome some limitations, uh, the high production time, the high uh, demand uh, on post-processing, the costs, the money, of course, it's a very um, important and crucial thing. And at the end, we have to say, especially in the field of metal 3D printing methods, we are not still at the end of mass production. AM is not established yet for mass production. It is in a good way. And uh, the ideas uh, today presented um, are very important steps, I hope, uh, towards this target. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I want to show you these two uh, new methods uh, to show you that it's also possible to find new things in this field. And one of these things thing is the first method, it's SAT, 3D printing. It is uh, the printing of a salt. It's uh, 
the salt uh, which is used in the heat pads uh, and and it is a really simple mechanism it's an instable salt a mixture of natrium acetate and water and this phase diagram shows you you can heat it up to 70 degrees celsius and cool it down and then it is crystallized and you can print you can print as uh, the source of a, of a liquid. You have to mixture it in this uh, um, form, then to heat it, to cool it, and then it is a printing thing. And this very easy uh, constructed and, and um, easy designed printing head it can be used for these uh, printing objects. You see here uh, the, the surface is also these are droplets and these droplets can be uh, brought onto uh, the uh, platform. It can be uh, carried by a robot or it can also be done by, by hand, of course. And uh, it's, it has some uh, very interesting advantages. SAT 3D printing works with a very cheap product. It costs really nothing. I mean the it, material you mean? Please? So sure, you mean the material is cheap. The material is cheap. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it is, uh, it is uh, um, uh, healthy. Um, I, sorry, it's 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 really healthy. It's 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 not a, a poison, and 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 you you can really eat it. Yes, it, it's it's not <laughs> dangerous for our health. And therefore, you can use it also for children. Okay. Yeah. It can be reused many, many times. You can remelt it. You can uh, uh, heat it up to seventy degrees of Celsius and cool it down and drop it down, droplet per droplet, with the printing head. And so it's it's an approach for children, for a uh, young technician for uh, arts, uh, for arts uh, education and so on, to build really big, huge um, uh, printing objects. And then if you are, it's enough, you have presented it, you have uh, taken a photo and so on, okay, I will melt it. And so it's uh, not, um, it's sustainable for our environment. Okay. This is one idea. And uh, after this idea for the youngsters, for the young people, uh, the idea for the mass production of metal printing, and it was uh, an idea um, more, more or less in a private uh, atmosphere with a friend of mine, and we said, okay, it might, it might be possible to use LEDs uh, for 3D printing. I have a friend, he is... Um, He's dealing with uh, very large uh, uh, light sources in the field of, of the theaters and, and pop concerts and so on. The, the um, light for that, and he's a light designer, and 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 his products were, were the first idea for this printer. And so we are introducing a, a change in metal additive manufacturing. So we come from the laser and therefore the abbreviation selective laser melting to the new one selective LED melting, LED based melting of metal powder. And the main principle is shown on this slide. You uh, have a building direction from the top to the bottom. You have a light source which can be focused mm -hmm. uh, via a, a lens um, a configuration, one lens or more lenses. And so you can vary and we can vary the uh, melt pot, the melt area, and therefore we can focus more or less. And the amount of powder is a very less amount of powder. You have here a powder reservoir and you and we um, spread the powder on the uh, heat resistant glass plate on only for um, less one millimeter. And the focus area is above uh, the glass plate mm -hmm. and between the um, part 
the already built part and the powder. And the component, the, the 3D object is preheated and the powder melts in the focus area and is combined with the already existing object under inert gas atmosphere. I, I understand that you can change the focus uh, uh, during printing, isn't it? You can make it larger, smaller, is that correct? Yes, and so it's possible to make thicker or thinner walls mm -hmm. in one idea, but in an extension, and the, the next picture is a little bit uh, uh, difficult or it's, it's uh, different to the uh, mm -hmm. picture of the last slide, but you see here the variation of the lens as one of the focus um, uh, variants, but it can also be done via an LCT projection uh, that the LCT array um, makes a cross section of the uh, printing area and therefore the light is uh, prevented to, to come through the glass plate through this LCD projection and of course the LED array can also be configured or controlled in that way that the areas which have to be uh, visible, they are switched on and the uh, LED um, elements which have to be uh, uh, non-active, they are switched off. And the third uh, uh, possibility is to make an electrostatic um, charging of the metal powder uh, onto the glass plate and therefore you have three um, uh, methods of uh, precondition of this um, powder area, of this powder slice. Mm -hmm. one, the first one is the focus, the second is the LCD projection of the cross section and the third one is an electrostatic um, charging of the powder and it can be work it can works independently but it also can be uh, combined which means it dependent on the type of product you are want to print you adapt those three parameters uh, yeah and and how do you do that design wise I mean you have to let's say pre-configure the, the, the system, you have to tell the system that it should do this and that for those three parameters. Is that also, are you also working on that? Yes, that's not uh, realized at the moment, but it is the, the plan. The plan is, of course, to, to integrate artificial intelligence from the beginning to the printer. Okay. And if you have a, an LED, LED array, it's possible to, to um, uh, control each element of this array. For instance, yeah. 160 LEDs are controlled and they can um, be uh, influenced to a composition of LED light. And this can also be done. Okay. Especially to improve the metallurgical uh, um, properties of the material. Okay. One of the big disadvantages at the moment in the laser based systems. Is the, the velocity of, of um, cooling, the cooling velocity is very high or we have high gradients of temperature inside the powder uh, bed and therefore we have hardness, we have uh, negative effects on the metal um, uh, grains and so on and, and therefore this metal will be will bring more coolness, more smoothness, more silence, more stability into the um, feature and into the powder bed. You mean when, when you use, when you apply LED? Yes, yeah. and, and to, to, to control the LED array in a, in a very interesting way so that the focus is not really the focus, the, the temperature gradient is uh, decreasing at the borders or not. It may be uh, selected uh, and it may be uh, arranged according the requirements of the parts. Okay, yeah. Difficult. It's a way, it's not at the moment, but I think it's uh, really in an easy way uh, reali 
um, can be realized. Okay. Yeah. These are some pictures from the first tests, especially first melting tests of thin aluminium plates with our LED source with 600 watts. And you see here some um, advantages of the LED light emitted diodes uh, versus a laser or also electron beam, yeah. uh, especially electron beam has extremely disadvantages also for metal printing and uh, this can be overcome also with the LED source. And you see, of course, it's more safe because we, you, you need not extremely um, uh, protection uh, against the dangerous uh, focus of the laser. You have here this variable melting area. You have therefore uh, a decreasing of building time and less powder. And uh, the powder handling, the T-powdering or the uh, mounting or the um, uh, assembling of the support structure can avoid it. And therefore, the product and the slat amp technology, I think, is now ready for mass production and, and the printer should be uh, designed in that form to fulfill this. And uh, the first printer which is designed is uh, a desktop printer, uh, but it is not really that what we at the end uh, want to do. Mm -hmm. And at the end it, is a, it should be a, a low cost printer for the manufacturing, for the real manufacturing, for serious production, for serial production, for mass production at the end. Okay, just one, one, one short thing. I mean, so I, if I understand correctly, let's say you want to build, uh, you want to have a large volume printer, then it's also a matter of having not, let's say, three LEDs, but a serious array of LEDs that can be as large as you, you want. Uh, that's one of the, the more LEDs you can have, the larger the size of the, the, the volume, the printing volume can be. Is that correct? That's really correct. and okay. and. Uh, it, on the one hand, it's, it's uh, possible and necessary to, to focus the LED array, but at the end, uh, with very high power LEDs, and the development is not at the end, of course, in the light technology, uh, the, the, the banner of, of the light, the light array at the end, fulfills all these targets of the future for the, for the build area. And one of the... Um, proposed uh, part would be the, the um, fuel cell uh, part, the uh, equalar plate of the fuel cell. This is a thin plate and it, it, should, it should be done for the mass production. You need very thin channels where the gas is led through from the inlet to the outlet for fuel cell and they should be stacked together. And, and with the slat end print, it should be possible, it might be possible to make a mass production, a really economic mass production of fuel cell technology. Okay. So you, I was interrupting you, so please go ahead. <laughs> no, it's, it's no problem, but I'm really uh, at the end. But what I want to show is that my students and I, that we are thinking about the 3D printer like a, a additive manufacturing uh, technique, like uh, additive thinking. So uh, the printer should not be designed in a, in a common way, it should be designed in an additive manufacturing way and this, and this is uh, the end and final product and uh, here are some impressions of this first prototype but at the end we will uh, realize not only this one, uh, more or less larger ones, bigger ones, but you see it's really simple uh, and it's not very very high sophisticated and I think it should be considered that we have to fulfill the um, rules of additive manufacturing to make a topology optimized uh, construction of the design. And my students are um, dealing with that. They, they know that they use the tools for topology optimization and therefore uh, it's, it's very, very good, good thing for me to see that and, and that mm. they can uh, use all these tools also to uh, make simulation for this part, especially the heat temperature situation would be necessary to do and, and so on. 
but at the end, the slide end technology should be very modular. Uh, so it should be extendable. You mentioned uh, it's depending on the light source, so it can be uh, extended uh, in length or width. So uh, for mass production, it's very important to have a printer which is not fulfilling everything. It should be um, produced, demand-oriented, product-oriented, and then it will be uh, very economic uh, here. Here you see the temperature uh, situation, the glass plate, which is uh, cooled with Peltier elements and also the temperature profile, which is really measured with our uh, um, 600 watt LED uh, source. We um, have here a temperature profile of approximately 700 degrees of Celsius. So uh, it's possible to melt aluminum powder or magnesium powder. Uh, magnesium and bioresorbable materials are very um, advantages and, and, and especially the low amount of powder is for magnesium which has uh, negative uh, attributes and properties for, for explosion and so on. It's very yes, famous for its explosions, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Too much powder. Yeah. Yeah. This is the final uh, thing, and at the end, uh, I have a short video for you. Uh, I think I will start it here, and you see the, the printing process. So it is the lighting, the um, yeah. melting process, then uh, the a new slice of um, powder. Is uh, spread onto the glass plate and in the meantime the part is moved uh, up and in the meantime of course it can be post-processed. The post-processing can be done directly during the process and also the support structure can be avoided to a minimum and yes this is the idea and uh, I hope I could understand it um, as good as possible for you to understand it and I'm, I'm open-minded for um, um, advices, for uh, comments and yes, I'm open also for questions. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's impressive to see, it's a, let's say, a, I would say a completely different approach. Um, so what is the timing of your, of your, because now you are in the prototype phase, what are your, let's say, further plans to uh, to expand this activity? Yes, uh, we are now in the phase where we are uh, thinking about a, a startup, a company which uh, could start uh, in the autumn, uh, some months uh, in the future. I think this year it will start and uh, the idea is to uh, extend the existing prototype to um, uh, first serious uh, of, of printers, but uh, we want to make uh, custom fit printers, not not uh, desktop printers for for normal use. Uh, uh, that we have some uh, first uh, partners and first customers. They say, "Okay, I'm interested in tooling. I'm interested in uh, electromobility and so on, or medicine." We have uh, a lot of. Um, contacts now with, with uh, hospitals. We've also um, at our hospital here in Graz, we have a, a project Comet where, the, where there's a printing device and the printing lab is directly uh, in the hospital. Okay, it's in the operation room. That's, that's an, a, a very um, promising approach. And, and on the other hand, of course, for mass production of electromobility, I think for battery systems, for high fuel cell systems and so on, these are the, uh, the primary customers. And this is the future plan, so that we have within one or two years a set of, of first customers. And then uh, we, of course, especially for the young students and the young persons, a possibility for a new product, a new for the future and 
Besides that, we want in our lab uh, extend our research, especially what is the result? What are the uh, properties of the material? And we have uh, a lot of prop a lot of uh, labs here at the university uh, to make um, the investigation of the structure of the material. And 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 beside that, we want to make high uh, potential. Uh, journal papers, especially dealing with the results of this first prototype, so the first research, um, okay. test. Well, thank you very much for your presentation and that you shared your your ideas and that your ideas became or have become reality. So I would like to thank you for your presentation and. Uh, um, well, in that sense, as at the end of each presentation, I always ask a personal question to the speaker or the presenter, because you have spoken, you've spoken about your, let's say, your research project and your plans. But I'm always also interested a bit about the, the what, what is behind that person. So I always ask, what is your favorite music or art or city or food or animal? It can be anything. So um, look forward to hear from you what what that is. <laughs> Yes, what is very important for me is that I have a balance in my life and, and what helped me during the last, I think, five years is to make yoga. Okay. <laughs> make, uh, to, to do something for my, for my body uh, so, and for always for my brain mm -hmm. to, to think about, uh, to, to come to, to a silence way and I can uh, make... Um, Yes, this, this helps me a lot. Okay. Good ideas. Namaste, I can say. <laughs> and from the kind of music, yes, a little bit old-fashioned. I, I like to dance with my wife, yeah. uh, but um, only for fun. Yeah. And, and the music at the moment, I, it's, it's what, what I, uh, my favorite song at the moment is Isn't She Lovely from, from uh, Stevie Wonder. Yeah. Yeah. Or, sing or that one, but also for I have three children, and and so I I, I like also the very young music, yeah. but not too too much heavy metal and so on. <laughs> romantic romantic things. Okay, okay. Well, thank you very much for both giving uh, your your uh, your sharing your ideas and plans about your product and the future, and also sharing a bit of yourself. So. Uh, I would say thank you very much and talk to you soon, hopefully. Thanks for that and goodbye. Okay, goodbye.